Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ask Concussion Doc, episode number 29. This episode is the concussion treatment episode, and this all started with one of the questions that we had from Nick Fino. Um, they assumed that they had persistent vestibular symptoms. However, not all symptoms are always vestibular symptoms, even though that may be dizziness. Uh, so the question is, I completed vestibular therapy and do home exercise, but the symptoms persist. Why do I make progress on the exercises within therapy, but that, uh, that progress doesn't seem to affect the functional activities of my life? Suggestions for next steps are completing therapy that doesn't resolve the symptoms? Question mark. Um, so this kind of just made us think, let's just do a, an episode that is on concussion treatment for persistent symptoms, and we'll talk about kind of the main evidence-based treatments for concussion. Uh, contrary to <laughs> some popular belief, you can actually treat a concussion injury, uh, and this has been established kind of throughout the literature for the past about five or ten years or so. Um, so what are the best treatments? How do we do them? When do we structure them? Um, and, and we'll kind of go from there. So one of the best treatments for concussion is exercise therapy. We start with this one uh, at Complete Concussion Management. This is kind of our go-to starting point uh, right off the hop. If somebody comes in with persistent symptoms, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put them on a treadmill. Now you want to do exercise for treatment, but you have to do it in the proper way. You can't just tell somebody to go and exercise because they need to know at what intensity, uh, what type of exercise, uh, what the duration of that exercise should be, and all of these certain things. Now that's going to depend on the results of your treadmill test because the exercise that's actually therapeutic is sub-symptom threshold exercise. So the first thing you have to do is establish what their symptom threshold is and then use that to guide the rehab moving forward. Now, the evidence that's come out on the Buffalo concussion treadmill test has shown that it is very effective as a treatment modality for persistent concussion symptoms. And it's always our go-to because the Buffalo concussion treadmill test also tells you kind of the concussion trajectory that people are on. So what's causing their symptoms? Well, you have kind of five main causes of symptoms, and this ties right in with the treatment that we're going to talk about. So the number one cause of persistent symptoms, and these aren't in any order by any means, but the, just the one that we talk about first is a blood flow abnormality. So blood flow abnormality or autonomic nervous system disruption, some sort of physiologic mechanism within the brain that's leading to persistent symptoms kind of on a global front. And that's where the test for that is exercise and the treatment for that if it's positive is also exercise but done in a specific way. The next one on the list is metabolic, inflammatory or hormonal. We put those three together um, just because that's how we've always lumped it together but metabolic meaning that ATP or energy levels are remaining low for whatever reason. Sometimes this may require the person to go on an extra additional phase of rest. Sometimes this might require the person to start taking dietary supplements to help boost energy levels. Um, you know, things like creatine, um, things like green tea, things like, um, you know, all sorts of different supplements that, that could be used to help boost metabolic levels. Inflammation is the other part of that equation. Inflammation happens after injury but inflammation also creates more inflammation. It has this kind of cyclical response where anytime there's an inflammatory response, you're gonna get uh, inflammatory markers that also basically call for more inflammation to come to an area and you get this kind of ongoing cyclical response. There's this idea behind the gut-brain axis. So the brain working in tandem with the gut and signaling back and forth as to what's going on uh, in the gut system and then providing that information to the brain and the type of foods that we eat can make you feel foggy and down and lethargic and etc. That is potentially due to this gut brain axis that's happening. After concussion, gut permeability um, is at least thought to uh, increase. So once your gut permeability increases, this, this opens the door for more 
kind of pro-inflammatory um, things to happen and then cause inflammation in the brain, which makes you feel foggy, fatigued, confused, headaches, dizzy, whatever it may be. And then that causes more inflammation to go down to your gut to then open up your permeability, your gut lining, and then this just cyclical response happens. So even foods that you might have been fine with in the past now become pro-inflammatory for you and you have these persistent symptoms happening. So inflammation is another potential cause. The treatment is figuring out what's going on with your diet and what type of supplements may be needed to boost that up. Hormone levels is another one. This one's a little bit further down my list because this is more prevalent in people with severe traumatic brain injuries. When you get into concussion, it's a little bit more rare for people to have hormone imbalances, but based on the location of the pituitary gland where it sits right in the cella turcica, which is this little spot within kind of the skull uh, structure, the pituitary is very vulnerable to injury just because of where it is. And any type of pituitary dysfunction can dysregulate all of types of hormones throughout your hypothalamic pituitary axis, which can create all sorts of the same symptoms as concussion. The number one uh, sim um, hormone that, that's affected is, is growth hormone, uh, and that controls a variety of functions, which can make you feel all sorts of different things, um, and that, that might be the cause of your symptoms. So that's so number one is blood flow, autonomic nervous system. Number two is hormones, inflammation, and metabolic dysfunction. Treatment is mostly kind of on the dietary end, supplements, or potentially hormone replacement therapy uh, if needed. Number three is visual and vestibular. Now, this is people that may have dizziness, may have even sometimes cognitive difficulties. Maybe they have trouble reading or, you know, I'm trying to study for my exam and I'm reading through this stuff and I get to the end of it and I can't remember what I read. That could be a cognitive problem, but it also could be a visual problem where you're having you know this kind of dysfunction with your smooth pursuits where your eyes start skipping around on the page and you have this kind of saccadic you know thing going on where you're not picking up the words properly and so you're skipping words and you're coming back to them and then it's not it doesn't make sense in your head and so you kinda of keep reading but then you get to the end of the page and realize you haven't really retained anything that you've read that could be an actual ocular motor problem not necessarily a pure cognitive problem um, other visual symptoms, obviously, is if it feels like everything's moving within your visual field. Um, if it feels like you're dizzy, that could be a visual problem or it could be a vestibular problem. So a lot of times therapists, um, you know, particularly physiotherapists that have done vestibular training will say, I treat concussions. I have done my vestibular training. And a lot of times physicians will refer somebody for vestibular therapy just because they have a concussion and they feel dizzy. Well, that might have nothing to do with their actual vestibular system. So this person that goes through all of this vestibular therapy and is still symptomatic likely has some issues with the other systems that their vestibular therapist hasn't thought of or doesn't know enough to think about and they just keep hammering with the vestibular rehab that really is you know, temporarily working but not really getting to the root cause of the underlying symptoms. And so dizziness, um, is not necessarily just vestibular, but it might be. So visual, vestibular, we kind of lump as one. And another one that goes into that, that visit actually is looking at the neck. So the neck is the fourth potential cause of symptoms. Every time you get a concussion, you also get a whiplash injury. Whiplash and concussion have the exact same symptoms. So the symptom profile of neck dysfunction, neck injury is the exact same as it is for concussion. So headaches, dizziness, nauseousness, concentration difficulties, visual abnormalities. Um, your visual system is actually intricately linked with your neck. And so when your eyes move, your neck muscles will fire and engage. And if there's some sort of dysfunction there, that might create headaches. Well, for the person who is an ocular motor therapist or a vision therapist, they're going to say, well, when your eyes move, it causes a headache. Well, you have a visual problem. Not necessarily. It might be a neck problem that's referring pain to your head because every time your eyes move, certain muscles in your neck are engaging. And if there's dysfunction, that creates a referral pattern up to your head. And now you have a cervicogenic headache that's implicated or started or initiated from your ocular motor function. 
So there's that. But all of these three things, neck, visual, vestibular, can all result in dizziness. So again, getting back to my example of this person hammering on vestibular therapy, if they aren't taking care of the underlying neck dysfunction, your vestibular therapy isn't going to go anywhere. If there's a visual problem that isn't taken into consideration, your vestibular therapy isn't going to go anywhere. And so you really have to put all this stuff together in order to have effective treatment. You can't just go to a vestibular therapist and expect that that's going to help with your concussion unless you have a pure vestibular problem right you need a therapist that has training in a well-rounded type of thing where they're looking at this to the level that we're looking at this going it could be these things and it could and it's likely to be a combination of these things it's not just one of these things so you have to be looking at all of them in order to make sure you are catching whatever is causing these particular symptoms so we got blood flow autonomic nervous system we have uh, metabolic inflammatory hormonal we have visual vestibular and we have neck the fifth one is the psychological side of things okay so is <laughs> no matter what there is there's always some element of the psychological involved in people with persistent symptoms whether that be anxiety or depression or you know other types of mood issues where if you think about it when you're suffering from persistent symptoms for this long you know, you're going to be a little bit down. You can't do the things you want to do. You might be anxious about why you're still having symptoms. But that, those, you know, anxiety, depression, feeling down can lead to the same symptoms as concussion. So now what are we dealing with? Are we dealing with somebody who's starting to have a little bit of depression? Or are we dealing with ongoing concussion symptoms? Are we dealing with somebody who has a little bit of anxiety? Or are we dealing with ongoing concussion symptoms? Because they look very similar from a clinical standpoint. And oftentimes it's difficult to kind of parse them out. There's another concept called the good old days bias, which people with any type of injury, particularly in the concussion end of things, they don't remember what it's like to be normal. So you always will assume that, well, I never had this before. You know, my memory was always, you know, super, super sharp. I never would be forgetful like this before. Well, everyone has their moments where they're forgetful or everyone has their moments when they're talking with somebody and they're not really you know paying attention to what they're saying and then at the end they go I can't remember what that person's name is and they attribute that to being a memory problem that's not necessarily a memory problem that's the fact that you were inattentive at the time that you were talking to them right but somebody with a concussion will attribute that to concussion it's my brain my brain is dysfunctional because they don't remember what it's like to be a normal human being and so that right there creates this self-fulfilling prophecy that you still have problems and so you look for those problems maybe my visual system is a little bit messed up so you start staring at things for a prolonged period of time and realize yeah when I look at that I kinda go cross-eyed and things get blurry I have a visual problem Oh, my concussion is still here right so the psychological thing can play into your mind your mind is the most powerful thing that we have and it can play a lot of tricks on you and so the more you start thinking that you might have an issue or the more you start thinking that you you start looking for things throughout your day that kind of reaffirm the fact that you still have ongoing issues which then makes it top of mind again which then brings up all the symptoms and and away we go from there right so the psychological piece is huge in anybody that's had symptoms for longer than about six weeks let's say um, and oftentimes before that so Psychological intervention, generally that will be referred on to a psychologist for co-management. Um, education and reassurance goes a long way and that's where we come in as therapists to say this is what a concussion is, these are the potential causes, here's how we're going to deal with each one of them, here's how we're going to assess you for each one of them, and then here's the treatment protocol moving forward. That right there will really strongly reduce somebody's symptoms and kind of get them on the same page and going. We often find that we do an initial in-service in educational thing with patients as soon as we see them. We explain all these things and what we're going to do for them. And at the end of it, we'll see them the next day. And just, we've only provided education at this point. We'll see their symptom score drop to half of what it was before because now they have they feel like they finally found the right place. They're now dealing with a, a clinician who understands concussion in a more holistic viewpoint they aren't just going after vestibular they aren't just going after visual they aren't just going after neck but they're treating them as a whole and we're gonna figure out what the problem is you'll see that symptom score um, drop in half now here is our message to you if you are interested in learning how to do all this 
to put this all together as a complete package if you are treating concussions maybe not getting the results that you think you should be or if you're just interested in getting into treating concussions check out our course we have a network of clinics that's opening up around the world right now um, and I know that a lot of therapists listen to this show and watch us on on Instagram and everything and there's always a ton of questions that come in but this course is about 35 hours long. It covers everything that we currently know about concussions from an evidence-based standpoint. It starts with consensus statements. It goes into pathophysiology and blood flow and nervous system and, and all the way down to clinical management for acute concussions and different tests that you can do and all the way into persistent symptoms, complex cases, putting this stuff together algorithms that make sense that are easy to use and then even into chronic traumatic encephalopathy what do we know about that and how do we put this all together to have a very evidence-based concussion program so check out completeconcussions.com uh, if you want more information there's a there's a become a clinic link that's on there you fill out the registration form somebody will get in contact with you uh, and then you can start learning how to treat concussions in a more holistic way that's it for me today. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, that's it actually for the Christmas holidays because I am out of here uh, going on a little bit of vacation. So I will we'll be back in the new year. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy new year. Be safe. Be merry. Cheers.